At Forever Paws Animal Shelter, our mission is simple. Place these valued animals in loving homes. Forever Paws Animal Shelter, giving animals a new leash on life. talk about something fairly serious and I want to give you a trigger warning here. If you are of the leftist persuasion and you do not like these kinds of political discussions, I'm going to entreat you to leave your negative comments, uh, put your down votes, and I'll give you just a second to go ahead and click off now. Okay, those of you who remain, uh, I want to first talk about and remind you of something that happened back in uh, 2017. This band called Dream Machine was dropped from their label following so-called ugly opinions about immigration and uh, feminism. Essentially, this uh, husband and wife team are the core of this band Dream Machine and they went on an interview and they gave their uh, honest opinions about you know how they saw things and they kind of leaned to the right as far as their politics concern were concerned and their own record label dropped them as a result of this well long story short they ended up going on like Fox News and being interviewed on there and Doris who's from Bosnia said ICE is just doing their job Oh my God. And I'm glad they're finally starting to work on deporting criminal illegal aliens too. It took ages for me to get my green card here legally. And because there's so many illegals coming in, they make it hard for the people who do want to become part of the American society the right way. There is more. When asked to be critical of the music world, Doris criticized what she called horrible feminist bands who don't play their own instruments. Ooh, and she said, quote, they'll make songs about being sexually assaulted or how about empowering abortions are. So the record label Castle Face took to Facebook to say they were cutting ties to Dream Machine. Matthew and Doris Melton from Dream Machine are with us now from Austin. One thing we noticed when we were looking at the response from the controversy is something just didn't seem to add up. Yeah. Because on one side, we were getting thousands and thousands of positive emails, uh, response from uh, people supporting us. And on the other side, we didn't receive one single email from somebody who had an actual grievance or wanted clarification or justification for anything we said. So from that, we sort of realized it wasn't genuine outrage, mm -hmm. but more of a manufactured outrage that was born out of the political correctness, the peer pressure, and the virtue signaling that you see on social media. Yeah, and we didn't really even say anything that controversial. I mean. Who wouldn't want criminals deported? I mean, I can't think of one person who would want to wake up in a country and say, oh, I'm so glad that there's a bunch of criminals. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's really not that controversial. We thought, I mean, our first, our first reaction was, what did we say again? What was yeah. it again? We couldn't remember even. But, um, and you know, you're not allowed to criticize feminists because then you're a misogynist. And mm -hmm. if you're a woman who criticizes feminism, you have internalized misogyny. <laughs> I think yeah, you're, it's, it's you guys matter. are the smartest musical <laughs> artists I've ever heard. <laughs> the true definition of an artist is not giving a damn about what other people think, but the people that are yeah. going after you are so concerned about being part of their peer group that they threw you aside. That's what bugs me Absolutely. is that you guys are actually the rebels. Yeah, it's, it's literally amazing. just become neoliberals versus um, people with common sense. You know, it's like mentally ill people versus people who have a healthy mind and can see that, oh that these liberals are going too far. It's, it is interesting that there, that it's always about freedom of, of expression and the people that are supposed to be extolling freedom of expression are the ones trying to silence you. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy because all these people say, you know, oh, you're so oppressive to these people who are suffering, but I'm somebody who has a war background. I survived a war with my parents and um, I feel like I have a pretty good perspective of what is suffering, and especially coming from Bosnia, having your house bombed and all these things, you know, you, you realize like these people have it so good, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't escape a war to become weak. I, I escaped a war to have a life that is good and, and not dangerous. And that was an actual fascist regime. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, everybody's calling us fascists for, for saying that we want criminals supported and that feminist bands are terrible, yeah. which they are. At a certain <laughs> point, it, you have to say, at a certain point, normal people have to say this has gone way out of proportion. Yeah. But, and they've also started their own record label so they can release their albums on their record label. And apparently they're doing pretty 
well. They've got a YouTube channel. Uh, they've also got some pretty good music, I have to say. I went and checked out some of their music, and it's actually pretty rocking. It's kind of, uh, how would I classify it? It's almost psych psychedelic kind of stuff, psychedelic rock. Good stuff. But uh, the other day, this kid, viewer of this channel, and I say kid because I'm 40-something. I, I don't know how old he is. But this dude um, emailed me and said, you know, he he uh, found me through my dumpster diving videos and, and all this stuff. And he's talking about how he's from Olympia, Washington, which is the home of Evergreen State College. And you guys may have heard of Evergreen State College and all the problems that they've had. Hey, hey, ho, ho. These racist teachers have got to go. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. Has demonstrated anti-blackness in the... Pigeon holding, char charging, and sensing of two black trans dis disabled students based on false racially charged alleged. Uh, they actually had the students take over the college there for a time and uh, try to kick out some of the professors and they held some of the professors sort of hostage and they had like no uh, no whites at on campus days. Real clusterfuck of, of just leftist ideology on this campus. But uh, Olympia, Washington is where it's uh, kind of based. But this guy is from there and he has a band called The Sockets. For sure, baby, that's all she needs. And uh, he's just talking to me about how the, the quote, social justice mafia has been after him and his band recently because he likes making edgy jokes on Facebook sometimes and openly supports Donald Trump. Uh, these people have gotten their gigs canceled at local bars because they don't like the fact we won't bow to the mandatory way of thinking. So I'm, I'm interested about this, So and I message him back, I say, well, you know, hey man, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in, in hearing more of your story, basically. Uh, can you give me some more details of what's happened to you? And he sends me back some screenshots of uh, back and forth with him trying to book this venue called The Pig Bar, and they already had it all booked and everything, and he was going to drop off some flyers, and then he, he tries to, go, you know, go drop off the flyers, but they tell him, no, just forget about it, because we've, we've uh, learned that you're a racist, basically. Uh, learn that you, you know, post racist things online or to social media, and we're just not going to have your kind in our bar, basically, to play. And he comes back saying, wow, you know, you're, you're actually not giving me even a chance to defend myself here. You're just kind of taking their word for it, uh, basically. And the guy's like, no, I went on your social media and saw all this for myself, and we don't need your kind here. Uh, it's a free country and I can do what I want. I don't want to book you. So he doesn't have to book him if he doesn't want to. But, uh, you know, he kind of sort of refuses to tell the guy exactly what he, what he said, like quote from him. That's, he supposedly said that was racist or, or that was, uh, you know, bad. He does eventually, or she rather, does eventually come back and say, outwardly he supports Donald Trump. And that's the, one of the main reasons why they're not allowing him to play there because uh, he is a uh, quote, fucking racist, xenophobic, ignorant fuck. There are plenty of under other venues in town. We don't tolerate that shit here. Uh, because of the political views that this guy holds, he's actually sort of persecuted in a way and not allowed to play at some of the venues that otherwise would have him play there gladly. So it's not a matter of his music being bad. It's not a matter of him not having a... Uh, you know, enough of a following to play at the venue. It's a matter of his political views that he expresses uh, online. He did send me uh, links to some of his music, which I will put down in the description if you guys want to go check them out, uh, get, maybe show him some love. But it's actually, and the thing is, what's sad about it is it's actually good music, and it's uh, the it's exactly the sort of music that I would imagine, uh, you know, people on the left as well as people on the right would enjoy. You know, it's not it's not overtly political. I don't, I didn't hear anything. Uh, political in their uh, lyrics, really. Just, you know, kind of good rocking music. To me, it's just really indie sounding stuff. You know, I, the kind of stuff that I, frankly, listen to uh, more and more these days. But it's just sad, you know, that, that we're at a state that because of someone's political affiliation, whether public or private, whether they express it or not, is grounds for, you know, not being included in your local music scene. To me, that is, um, I don't know, man. It's just, it's... 
it's kind of beyond the pay. I mean, I'm sure it's gone on for a long, long time. You've always sort of had to conform. And, th and that's what I would tell you young kids, you little punks. Do you really want conformity from all the people around you? Is that really what you want? Because you seem to preach the exact opposite. You seem to preach all this bullshit lip service about anarchy and about, you know, being your own person and doing what you want to do and, you know, living life the way you want to live it, not being told what to do or being told what to think. And, you know, you're an individual and a unique fucking snowflake. But then a guy like this comes along who actually is an individual and actually is going against the grain, actually is punk rock. You don't like him. Uh, you know what that means to me? You know what that says to me? Uh, you know, you would have hated Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain lived in your town for a while, Olympia, Washington, and you would have hated him too because he, he wouldn't have taken your bullshit. He would have thrown a rock at your car. <laughs> From everything I've read about Kurt Cobain, you know, he, he, uh, I'm, I'm sure his views were pretty leftist, um, but I'm sure also his views were pretty nonconformist too, and he wouldn't have taken kindly to this kind of shit. So, you know, I don't understand what it is you're trying to prove or what you're trying to be. I don't know what it is you think that you are in your own mind. I'm a star! A great big shining star! Yeah! Uh, but I assure you, you're not it, uh, whatever it is. I, I can tell you, you know, I know what rock and roll is. I've been around long enough to see it, and you're not it. You know, if you're shutting down people on the basis of just their political affiliation, that's just silly. You know, you, you should look at their talent, man. Look at the way they play. Look at the energy they bring. Look at the, you know, the people they bring through the door, the bodies they bring in. Um, that's the things you should look at. If you're a business, you know, those are the things that you should be looking at. Not, you know, whether somebody supports the president of the United States. Because th here's the thing about this. Eventually, this will turn around and it will be used against you. At some point, you're going to hold some kind of view that somebody is not going to like and you're going to want something from them or, and they're not going to give it to you because of your political views. So what comes around goes around. And if we, sort of sp if we spread this kind of uh, exclusion and hate throughout music, local music communities like this, uh, it just leads nowhere fast. And I'll be curious uh, to hear from you guys. And, you know, I'm, I know probably half of you have already clicked off. A lot of you have already unsubscribed. But hey, that's what this channel is all about. I don't give a shit. I'm going to talk about the things that matter to me. If you don't like it, again, you can click off. But that's what makes this channel punk rock, and which, which makes a lot of the other channels that you can go listen to, uh, like fucking the Barry Manilow of guitar channels. They're not going to try to offend you. They're not going to skirt near the edge. Um, you know, Hey, guys, today we're going to do the top five things that you should avoid when you're looking at your Stratocaster. You know, I'm not that fucking guy. I don't think you guys tune in to see that guy on this channel. You, you tune in to see some real stuff. So I think a lot of you are still around. Some of you might have already clicked off and good fucking riddance. I hope you unsubscribe as well. But I want to hear from you guys. W what is your opinion on this? Have you actually been barred from any of your local uh, venues for your political beliefs? Have you had like the local uh, you know, social justice mafia called on you? or have If you're on the other side of the political spectrum too, I want to hear from you also. Have you had any Christian conservatives standing outside of, you know, protesting your... Uh, your rock show or your punk show or, you know, what do you think about this? How far do we take this political thing and, and does it belong in music? I mean, I know there are a lot of bands who their whole shtick is politics. You know, you got the Rage Against the Machines, the Fugazis, the uh, you know, the the Black Flags, you know, the Megadeth even, you know. A, a lot of bands have politics kind of interwoven it with their fabric, so it's kind of hard to separate those things, but and, and for those I understand, you know, I totally understand uh, that if your band is, is politically charged, but uh, at the same time, you know, I don't, I, I wouldn't want anybody be, to be excluded uh, from a venue necessarily because of their politics. Now, if their show is like, you know, G.G. Allen or something, and if he's shitting on the stage and throwing it to people, I mean, that's a totally different thing. That, that goes beyond politics. That's just public health. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, that, that's a complete that's a completely different thing so no no shit tossing at the venue I, that I can I get behind that but you know as far as politics have, has this ever happened to any of you guys uh, let me know down in the comments um, what's the worst thing that has happened to you uh, as, as far as you know someone has anyone ever come up to, to the stage and accused you of anything has anybody gone on social media and slandered your band or um, you know 
let me know down in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear from everybody on this. It's uh, I think it's a growing problem, and I think in, it just seems to be in, in ultra liberal uh, circles and and uh, places, especially like Olympia, Washington, you know, where Evergreen State College is. Um, it seems to be really prevalent. Places like Portland, Oregon, you know, where it's just really, really leftist. Uh, San Francisco, you know, it, it seems like a lot of these kinds of stories come out of places like this. Um, the other band that I mentioned before, Dream Machine, I think they're from Austin, Texas, which, uh, you know, Austin is one of the uh, the bastions of uh, liberalism in the whole state of Texas. So it's kind of a blue spot in, in you know, a lot of red there. You know, I'd just be really curious. Uh, let, let me know down in the comments. Uh, where are you from? Has this ever happened to you? Which side of the political spectrum do you consider yourself? You know, um, and it would just be really interesting to hear from everybody on this. All right, that'll do it for this Ship Post Friday. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Hit subscribe and the bell to receive all notifications down below if you have. Uh, but for now, y'all take care.